Hi, my name is Ani Martinez. I am 23, and then I graduated here from Stephen Argyle Central back in 2018. Um, that was also the year that I enlisted in the military. That January, um, Joachim Kazmerchik, who is also enlisted, is the one who kind of got me going and introduced me to the military world and coaxed me into it. Um, yep, after graduation, I graduated in May and then in July I was shipped off to Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. That's where I did my basic training and my AIT training. How'd you get there? I flew. Guess what? Okay. Yep, and I actually went with two other people from Fargo. Um, did you know them? I only knew one of them. She, it was also a female. She was a nurse in Fargo. We met at um, RTC. I don't know if you know what RTC, just like training that we had done pre, they do that like before you leave. Okay. Uh, we had met there. Well, was, was that in Fargo then, the training? Nope, that was at uh, Camp Grafton out in Devil's Lake. Okay. Devil's Lake. But I met her, she's actually an MP. We we're both MPs, that's where we met. She had enlisted a week before I did. So, we were shipped off together. So Jockham wasn't at the same time as you? No, he was enlisted a year prior to me. So, okay. he had already done his basic training. Okay. But, um, yeah, I went with her. We ended up going to Fort Leonard Wood. So you flew into St. Louis and they bust you from there? Or? Yep, okay. we flew from St. Louis with, it was her, I, and then this other male, I don't know, I can't remember his name. I never saw him again once we got to Missouri, but they flew us there and then we got, we waited at the USO for maybe two hours. I took a quick nap and then we got on a bus and they took us to Fort Leonard Wood. Um, we spent a few nights just in processing there in the day that they were the day that we were getting put into sending them sending us to our company that we were going to be training at they um put us all together and kind of just counted one two three and sent us off and we actually actually ended up going to the same company also but different platoons, but I saw her every day. So So they counted you off to put you in different platoons? Yep, so it was okay. three platoons, so they kind of just went one, two, three, one, two, three. We ended up, we actually, our plan was to stick together, so we were like, oh, let's just stand by each other, but then they started counting one, two, three, so we didn't end up together. I was put in second platoon, and she was put into third, but, um, we said we stayed in the same barracks, so I still got to see her every day, and um, we were there for roughly six months or so. I left in July, got back um, November, right after Thanksgiving. So I also had Thanksgiving there. Okay, but, so um, what what was basic like? Um, it was different and interesting. <coughs> Um, I had, I joined, I enlisted because I wanted to do something that was different and out of my comfort zone because I'm a like very to myself person. So I just wanted to do something that would kind of push me to my limits. So I did. Um, it was fun and challenging, but I had, I always had her there too to kind of help me out. But um, we did red phase which was um, the first three weeks and that was kind of them getting after us for the first three weeks and chasing after us. We were always getting in trouble. We were never doing everything right those first three weeks. So was your DI male, female? Um, so every platoon had three drill sergeants. I had drill sergeant Alvarado, drill sergeant Pernada and Drill Sergeant um, Garrison. 
Garris, Drill Sergeant Garrison was the uh, only female Drill Sergeant that we had, so she kind of dealt more with the females when it came to coming in the barracks and stuff. So those were my three. Were the barracks co-ed then? Nope. So my basics of what they did, so I did an OSET training, which OSET means is I do basic and my uh, AT training. AIT training all at once, so I never left. I was there the entire time in the same building and everything. And they had the first floor was females, and then we were all just in one bay. And then the males were on the second floor, and they had every platoon had their own um, barrack for the males. So the first had theirs, second had theirs third had theirs but all the females were together so that's how that was and we were there the entire time for the OSET training so once we graduated basic um, no family could come when we graduated from basic it was just a quick ceremony and then the next day woke up and we were going straight into the AIT training okay but what's some of the things you did in basic training what what I mean, you had PT and... Yep, PT every morning. Uh, wake up was roughly around 05 every morning for getting dressed and being downstairs by 0530. Um, we did PT every morning, and then after that would be breakfast. We'd march back to the barracks, and we'd get ready for whatever it was that we were doing that day. It could, um, the first few weeks it was more like a um, confidence training. So we did like a confidence course where you, you know, um, jump over things, climbing with the nets, um, pulling yourself on a rope, just different stuff like that, just to build your own confidence. We also had the, uh, what was it called? The rappel tower. We did that the first three weeks, which is also for our confidence to see if we could repel down. Um, I remember that day because I'm not a fan of heights, so I was not looking forward, but I was trying to keep my calm, but my drill sergeant called me out and he's like, oh, Private Martinez, you're looking a little pale. <laughs> he's like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm fine. He kept picking at me that entire day because I, I waited until the last group because I really didn't want to go and then I get up there and the person in front of me actually um, let go so she flipped upside down and they had to go um, they had to get a ladder and they had to go and help her out because she got twisted in the rope and that was right before I went so then that made me feel even worse I was like because we had to wait up there until they got her down <coughs> and then we um, Came up to my turn. I was a little shaky, but my drill sergeant Garrison, the female female drill sergeant I had, was the one that was up there with me, and she kind of could tell that I was nervous, but I was doing it. And she was just like, "Oh, do you trust me?" And I was like, "Yes." And she's like, "Well, if you trust me, uh, you know that I'm not gonna let you fall or do something wrong." Even though a girl just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Okay." And she kind of just walked me through it and talked to me. She had me just look at her the entire time as I was doing it. And I got down. It was quick and easy. Um, when, when you were there, uh, were there regular Army people too? Yep. Training so, with you? Yep. So um, the, you can say the teachers or the course leaders were usually a full-time Army people that were showing us or people that were uh, certified into like the confidence course and stuff. They had the repel masters that are called doing those. So every time we went to a class they had like a full time staff specialized in that teaching us. So, But, but were there actually regular army people like Mason Rominski would be regular army? Were there yep. people like that with you? Yep. So um, in my company it was a mix of the reserved, active army, National Guard. It was just a mix of Excellent. everyone. Okay. We were all there. Um, so nobody got treated any different nope, than anybody we else? we were all treated the same. We all got KP and everything the same. Yep, we all did all that together. Um, 
yeah, we, they just had, they had a list of who was active, who was National Guard and Reserve, but we were never treated, we were all treat, treated equally um, in a matter of active, reserve, National Guard, but, uh, and then um, after those first three weeks, we rolled on to actual, like, training, like, on our weapons. Um, so what kind um, of weapons were you trained on? So we, we trained on the M4s and then the M9s. Since What's we, an M4? Is that a rifle? Yep. It was the rifle and then the M9s, just the pistol that we use. Uh, we trained on that since uh, we're military police. We're required to have those. So those are the two. We also got to do um, the 249, the saws. We did a class on those. We did a class on the grenade launchers and grenades. So we got to mess around with all the fun stuff. So, so. did you get to throw a grenade or anything? Yep, we got to throw a grenade. They um, why they, one? Yep, we they had a whole course. <coughs> they th that course you you go through a few practice rounds. You take the class and they give you a few like fake ones you can mess with and practice on. Um, and it's like three different um, things you have to pass before you get the actual live one. Was it still the baseball or did you go back to the pineapple kind of grenade? Like kind of like a pineapple, baseball? yeah. Well, no. it, was, it was more like a pineapple. Yeah, it was. Go back to that. Yeah, it was kind of a little longer. Um, very stiff. I was nervous when I was going up there on pulling the pin out because it would it'd get stuck in there. So I was a little nervous. But when we got to the last part of the class where you have that live one, they um, take they had us in groups, and then one one group will go out, and they had like different. Um, I think it was like three at a time. And it was one person, two, three, and they had like a big cement thing in front of you, like a pit kind of that they were in. Then the rest of us were kind of like in this um, almost like tunnel type of thing, kind of a way, but had little windows where we could still see them. And they had like, um, I can't remember what it was. It was some type of vehicle out in the distance, which was their target that they were supposed to throw to. And then they do the, um, they'd go one at a time. So the first person would go pull their pin, you know, throw it. And then everybody ducks that one, the three that were there, they were told, to, instructed to duck right away. It'd go off. And then the next person would go. And then the next person would go, the third person. Could you kind of feel the concussion a little bit? Yep, you could feel it from where we were standing. You could... Uh, feel it kind of like the vibration and uh, we had our earplug our plugs in but you could still kind of hear it um, But yeah, so they kind of had it was kind of like a tall pit and a wall So they kind of had to throw a little higher, but they had a target to we had a target to aim to so that's how we um, got trained on those and then um, Did you do gas chamber at all? Yes, Cheers that us. was that was also the first three weeks that we did that. Um, we did it in groups. We went by platoon, so each platoon got to go with each other. We did that. Um, we were instructed just to go in. They had us with the mask on first. And then we had to recite the Soldier's Creed. And then... Um, with the mask on. With the mask, with, with the mask on first. Okay. And then they were, we were instructed to take it off and, and recite it again. But you know, everybody, once you take it off, you know, I think I got the the soldiers, and then I was done. I couldn't <laughs> keep talking. That's all I could get out. Um, Burn you a little bit. Yep. No, I could feel. It felt like fiberglass on my skin and <coughs> my eyes were burning my sinuses got all cleared <laughs> I uh they, cry a little yep That's I, what I call it yeah days. my eyes were burning yep we they had us walk out and we had to walk in a big circle with our arms out and our mask like this and we had to keep walking until we were able to regain our composure um 
yeah, I had, when we did that, like I said, my sinuses cleared up. I had snot all over me. I think there's a, they actually posted a pic, they took pictures, and there's a picture of me walking out with my eyes closed, and you can just see just my... A lovely picture. Yep, lovely picture of me. And I had to go, I think I went around two times because my eyes were just so watery <coughs> from the, the uh, chemicals, but... I did that. That was also the first two weeks, and then um, past that, because if you, there are some people who couldn't stand there the entire time, and they like put their mask back on, so they actually had to go through again and leave their mask off. So I was luckily smart enough just to get through it, get through it, and suck it up, so I didn't have to do it two times. Um, so yeah, that was that. Uh, we did the saw training. That was, we also had like little targets out with the the machine gun and we just went for it. So you the, actually got to shoot it? Yep. Saw? Really? Yep, we got to shoot it. Um, they gave everybody a belt. We got to go and then they asked, We they, they had extra rounds I remember and they asked if anyone wanted to go again and you get they let some people go again. We got to do that, and they they also trained us on how to like take it apart, clean it, um, because we had every platoon after that. Every platoon was assigned two of them, so they had to, you know, upkeep nope. it, mm -hmm. you know, clean it, um, take it everywhere, you know, hand it off, taking turns with it. Um, it it's pretty. It's pretty heavy. Isn't it? It's pretty heavy. I think I have a picture of myself with one because. In my current company, they actually assigned one to me this this last uh, training year, my two weeks. So I was carrying it around for two weeks, and I actually have a picture of that. But um, that'll get you in shape. Yep, it definitely. With my height and it just with the sling, it kind of I had bruises on my leg from it just hitting my leg the entire time when I walked. Well, I'll put that picture in here. Yep, I'll have to put it in there. <laughs> But yeah, we got to do weapons training. Um, Did you have to crawl under machine gun fire of any kind? Or? Yes, that was my basic training graduation. So that night, that not not that night, that day we um, went to this course. Now I can't remember how long they said it was, but uh, we started at one end and we had to crawl with our M4 on us so we had it on it was in front of us or however we wanted to do it crawl with it to the other side while they were um shooting the rounds like over us pits like, blowing up yep and we they waited till nightfall so you could see they had like they had you could see the, like the little tracers. lights the tracers you know going uh, up up above you and we had our vest on our uh, ACH on we were in, we had the choice if we wanted gloves or not you know um, knee pads, if you wanted elbow pads. I didn't do any of that. <laughs> I just did gloves, ACH, and my vest. ACH is uh, is my the helmet. Helmet, okay. Yep. That's what we call it, the ACH, the Kevlar. But um, we did it. We crawled. They waited till night, so you couldn't really see. All you knew is that you had to go straight ahead. It was dark. You could just see the tracers, and um. They had little like obstacles in your way, like cars, or they had like the Constantino wire and stuff like that that you had to kind of nav navigate your way through. Um, yeah, you just army crawled the entire time. I had it in front of me and kind of just went that way. I guess when I was going, instead of going straight, I ended up going like off to a side kind of. So and you wanted to go through it. Yeah, and I I remember thinking like, I got so tired and I was like, how am I not at the end yet? Like I should be at the end. And I remember I just I was laying there because I got I got a, a cramp in my foot. My foot cramped. I don't know. I think it was from Ooh. me just moving and I was tired. I kind of just I was, took a break. I kind of just laid there. But then I heard my drill sergeant. I heard uh, drill sergeant Garrison. I heard her voice yelling at uh the soldiers to keep going that they were almost there so I heard her so I was like oh I must be so close so I kept going and it was literally seconds and 
I felt the sandbags that I had made it. And um, that was probably the, out of like everything of my training, mentally more challenging for me because I was really tired. I had sand because the sand, because it was like a, just a big sand pit. So the sand got through your yep. um, uniform. I had it all over me and my weapon was so dirty after that. I had sand everywhere with my cramp. I remember just like thinking like, oh, I don't want to, <laughs> this is too much for me right now. But um, probably the most mentally challenging because I was, didn't, I was, I wanted to give up when I was doing that. I was like, I can't. But that hearing her voice yelling at us to keep going that we were there gave me the little extra push. That was probably the most challenging. And the repel tower, just mentally mm -hmm. getting over my fear and keep and having to keep going when I was experiencing a cramp and just wanted to stop and be done. But it was, you know, you look back on it now and you're glad you did it. It was, you look back and I was like, oh, it was kind of fun. It's you an know. experience you'll hope you, never get again. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, but so we got to do that. That was our graduation. We once you completed that, you graduated from basic. They held a little ceremony, just a real quick. They actually video videotaped it for our families and just posted it on Facebook. And after that, we just went back to the barracks, got to clean ourselves up, and then the next day we started our. Uh, um, AIT training. No, you didn't training. get no leave? No, kind? no leave. It was... Uh, Even during basic, nothing? No, no. I, so we were... The whole uh, six months, the OSET training, was a straight through. So no leave, nothing. Um, just a quick ceremony for graduating. Like I said, no family was there. It was just our company and our drill sergeants. And we just, the next day, woke up and started our our training for our MOSs. So. Did you get to use your cell phone at all in basic training? Yep, so they, it was different. I heard of uh, different companies like got to do it like maybe once a month or so, but our drill sergeants let us have it every Sunday, um, unless we did something wrong where they got angry and they took that privilege away. But uh, almost every Sunday they gave us um, a few minutes to call back home uh, and then that that was just during basic. So during basic, uh, every Sunday we got our phone. We could call back to family. I think they gave us like 15 minutes for everybody. And then once we started our AIT training, we got to have it every Sunday for uh, like maybe I'd say an hour or so because um, on Sundays during AIT, if you know if you're passing everything, you know your PT was good, you were on good behavior, you were passing all the classes. Um, they um, would let you go, just only on base. You had to stay on base, but you could go to like the PX to get anything that you needed or the USO, and they'd let you have your phone during that time. So like about an hour. Sometimes they'd give you like an hour and a half and you can just go buy what you needed. You had your phone so you could make your phone calls if you wanted. But and then but that was only if you, you know, your PT was good and stuff. If you sure. didn't, you got your uh just like thirty minute phone call to whoever you wanted and then you had to give your phone back. Okay. What's your rank now? I am right now your rank is E two. E two. Yeah. And what were you in AITs? I was a uh, fuzzy, so I had no rank. <laughs> fuzzy. Yep, that's what they called us. They called us fuzzies. We had no rank. And you can answer this if you want to, but or not. But uh, do you remember what your pay was? I don't. I don't. I I hardly even know what my pay is now. I look at it and I'm like, okay, and then I forget about it until I look at it again. But um, yeah, so I was just a fuzzy. When I came back, I was at my company where I'm at now. It's when I got back, that I was a fuzzy there for about a year or two. I didn't get a rank. In where was that at? In Fargo. In Fargo. So I had no rank when I got back. So I had no rank while I was there. No rank when I got back, and then I got it um, during my first AT, my t my first two week training. 
Um, How long is your enlistment? Is it six years? Six years. Six yep. Years, okay. When I my AT when I first got my rank, it was um, <coughs> my first AT. My first sergeant of the time just well, she asked she's like, "Oh, you don't have rank yet?" And I was like, "No." And she's like, "Okay." And then she came back maybe an hour late later and knocked on the barracks door and just handed me some rank and she's like she's like I got these at the PX she's like you can put it on and I was like okay cool <laughs> yep so that's how the when I, the first time I got rank but yeah during my entire basic and AIT I didn't have any rank on okay so AIT what stands out in your mind about that so that is so AIT is my uh, MOS training so I was military police 31 Bravo um, that's when we went more in depth as to, you know, the MP, you know, duties and stuff like that. That was more, I enjoyed that way more than basic training. I mean, we got to do like, uh, forensics training, you know, with the fingerprinting and how to like take evidence and how to, you know, um, do all the paperwork for the evidence and how to detain people, how to search people how to clear buildings, all that type of stuff, so. More classroom stuff? Yeah, we do classroom and then we'd have like, morning would be classroom and afternoon would be like, hands on training, having us do the stuff. So that was probably, that was, I really enjoyed that. We had, um, like I said, it was how to search people, buildings, um, more What month is this during the year? What so I, it was probably, so I left in July, August, probably October-ish. So it started to cool off a little bit. Yep, it started to cool off, yep. Um, yeah, so we got more training on our M9s. We had to do um, regular qualification and then a night qualification with those. Um, we had to... Uh, you know, learn how to do combatives, and uh, we got to, you know, practice with, you know, you had like a big, I don't know what you call it, but had like a big poof thing at the Bungie. end. Yeah, but you had the, helmet. The, the helmet and just go. But that, that was pretty fun too. I remember when I was doing that, I got, I had to do that. Everybody had to do it once, but we didn't have enough people for, everybody to have like a partner so they made some people do it again and I actually had to do it twice they paired me up with someone two times so I had to do that two times the first time around um, I went up against a male they put me with a male because they they just paired you up with what they thought would be challenging for you so I went with a male and I actually lost my first round um, and then the second time around, my drill sergeant's like, oh, you're actually going again. You're paired up with someone else. And I was paired up with a female that time who was about my height. And um, it was her first time going. And I guess I had, I had already gone, so I kind of knew the... No experience. I was experienced, and I ended up um, winning that round. Um, and that was an AIT, yeah? Yep, Budget? we did that. Yeah. It was... It was it was fun. Um, we did that, and then that's also when we did, you know, um, the training on, you know, like how to use your own weapon to like take someone down, not just like if you don't have it, um, how to do all that stuff. So like um, putting them on the ground so you can half handcuff them. Uh, we got to. Let's see what else did we do? Oh, we got training on the MP cars. We got to we had to do a driving course. We had a we had to pass the driving course, which it was. They had the MP cars. They had cones, and you had to stay in the cones, and it was like a like a zigzag thing, and then you had to do like a three point turn at the end, and then you had to do the whole course in reverse and get back to where you started. So that was pretty fun to do. Also, I did. I had to do that two times though, because you you couldn't hit more than three cones. And for some reason, when I was going in reverse, 
that last turn that I had to do to get to where I started, I'd always hit a, uh, I'd always hit three cones on that last turn right here. So I had to do it two times, but I got it, and that was pretty fun to do that. And it was, um, we got to mess around with the sirens, and they showed us around. Some cars had cameras, so some people had advantages, and some didn't have cameras. Some you just had the mirrors. The first time I had the mirrors. And um, the second time I had the camera so I could see where the cone was so I didn't hit it that last round. But that was that was also during my AIT training. Sounds like you had way too much fun. It was fun. We got to... <laughs> I, I enjoyed my AIT. We got a lot of hands-on with our stuff. And we got our Humvee training during that time too. Which was kind of like the driving course that we had taken for the um, MPs. But we had to, it was a, a course with the Humvees that you had to go like through water, kind of like dip down and then back up. So we got to go through water. I remember my drill sergeant that was with me was actually our senior drill sergeant that was in the Humvee with me. I remember I was nervous because I was like, I don't want to get the vehicle stuck in the water or something because it was a pretty sharp like, downhill and then ending up and he walked me through the entire time on like the entire time that we were doing he's like oh go a little faster to get back up or now you take it slow so you don't get you know just don't like splash right in there so um that was pretty fun and then we had to practice with the Humvees just like uh having your ground guide, how to give the hand and arm signals. Being a city girl, you didn't yeah. have any experience with that. No. Right? <laughs> but um, that was all fun. We had to, that's when we also started training on like our convoys, you know, how we set up our convoys, the different, you know, setups that we have. And then our um, dismount and uh, mounted. So... That dismount was when we got out of the Humvees and we were, you know, walking along like a road or anything. And so we practiced dismounting and the different, you know, uh, I guess you call them like forms that they, you can walk in. And mount, mounted, you just stay. It depends on where you are. I was always the driver, so I was always just driving. And then we had um, the TC, which was usually my drill sergeant, which was you know giving you the instructions. And then the gunner was on top with um, the saw, the machine gun, and you know he probably had the most fun because he got to play with the rounds and stuff. But so, did you wear Kevlar the whole time? Like, yep. Anytime we were in the Humvees, we did. Yeah. On, on, on your on your bike. Yep. So in we. Your helmet. Yep. So we had the our helmet, our vest, um, our M4 or the saw, whatever you were. So how heavy is the vest? Um, uh, without plates, um, not that heavy. Without the plates, it kind of just feels like you're a little weighed down. With the plates, it depends what size you are. You know, if you're a large, the plates are gonna be a lot heavier. Medium. I was a medium, so. I, they felt a little like heavy to me. And then there was somebody smaller than you. Yeah, they had some smalls. They were. <laughs> some I don't. Small. Some people had smalls that probably should not had smalls. They, the vest, like my vest, covered up until like the bottom of my like stomach. But some people's vests were like up here. I'm just like that does. It's <laughs> like if you get shot, you're gonna get <laughs> shot right in the stomach. But um, we got to do all that training. Um. We got to, what else did we do in AIT? Mm, I think I covered Your it. tasers or anything like that? No, we didn't do that until I got to my company here in okay. uh, Fargo. They, I guess they had done it in the past, but they were moving away from that until you get to your uh, company. Yeah. But um, maybe the last like three weeks, Three weeks or so before we graduated, everybody got to uh, log into the computer and look to if you were active duty. They had the status on where you were going, so that's when people found out when they were active where they were going. And then, for the most part, National Guard and Reserve knew where they were going. But um, 
that's when they got to find all that fun stuff out. I had friends going, you know, Kansas, Washington, Colorado. That was regular a, army people. Yep, I had a few going. A few of my battle buddies went to Korea. There was a bunch that ha went to Korea right away. Um, but it was fun. Uh, my time with them was enjoyable. It was definitely an experience like none other. I still keep in contact with quite a few of them. So okay. we, our last like, last thing that we had done was a big like FTX. It was like a five day like event that we were doing. And it was out in the field, so we had to pack our bags, and we rep marched to where we were staying, and we were running training, and this was in November, like the week, probably the week after Thanksgiving, it was the, la it was the last week that we were going to be there, and it had just snowstormed, there was a big storm. There was snow everywhere, and they weren't sure if we were going to do it because of the snowstorm, but we ended up doing it anyways, and instead of wreck marching since it just snowed, they decided we'd just take the Humvees there, so we did. We get to where we're staying, and it's, you know, they had little huts, and um, the drill sergeants couldn't get the heat to work, the little, like, uh, wood stove. stove type things. They said they couldn't get them to work. <laughs> they said and it was it had just stormed so it was really cold there was snow everywhere and um everybody we were setting up our uh, little cots and everybody was kind of like choosing a person to like put it right next to so they could stay warm because they said the stoves weren't working and I remember it was I just felt really cold that night like I my toes were hurting because they were so cold, I didn't want to get up to even use the bathroom because I was really cold, and I did not sleep that night. I remember just being awake the entire time, just thinking about how cold I was and how my toes hurt so bad. And then at some point during the night, the drill sergeants decided to mess with us and were throwing, throwing around like uh, grenade sims just to like the yelling incoming, and they'd throw one and you'd hear it go off. And they were uh, expecting us to react, and a bunch of people did react. You know, they were running out with their stuff, but I did not. I was just so cold. I just stayed in my bunk. And the I was other like, ones were trying to get warm. <laughs> yep, I was like, they're not going to notice if I'm not there running around. <laughs> my feet were so cold. I was like, I'm not going <laughs> to rush to put my boots on. And then everybody came back after that, because not everybody left. Um, they, you know, tried to go back to sleep, but whole, like I said, I, I did not sleep that night. And I remember that morning when they were waking us up, you know, they were doing their counts and we were in formation. And, um, it was, every platoon was in a different formation. And I just remember just still being so cold and like, all of a sudden, like, I'm just in formation, in formation with my like weapon and I just get hot. I'm insanely hot. I start sweating and my ears start ringing. I'm sweating. My ears are ringing. And then I, my vision started going blur blurry. So I was like, oh, this is, not this good. is not good. And I couldn't see the person next to me because it was like five in the morning. So it's still dark out. My, like my vision's like going and I'm feeling insanely hot. So I just like lean to the person next to me and I couldn't tell who they were so I was like who are you <laughs> and they're like they're like it's Franklin his name was Franklin it was this big tall guy like one of the tallest guys that were was there and I was like I was like I don't I don't feel really good I think I'm gonna faint and he's like really and then he said that I instantly just dropped cropped. he's like you just collapsed and the person behind me had actually caught me and um I was probably out for a few seconds, they said. I woke up and they were, they were, uh, I could hear everybody kind of yelling at, yelling at each other, you know, saying, oh, take her, take her weapon off, because I had it slinged on me, and I had my, um, my M9 here, so they were saying, take it off. I woke up and I remember it, I remember, like, going crazy and trying to take my stuff off, because I still felt hot. And I, I, could, I remember hearing them saying, stop, it's cold, like, you don't take it off. 
But all I, I just couldn't control myself. I kept trying to take my things off until someone finally just said, just take her, I had my ACH on, because I had my vest and my ACH. They're like, just take it off. So they took it off. And Franklin, the tall guy, like I said, he carried me to my drill sergeants where they were staying. They were staying in a hut too. But theirs had heat. Oh, funny thing, huh? Theirs had heat. And they he, they sat me down and they sent him off and my drill sergeant came in. And there was actually another another trainee there who had also apparently passed out before I did. And um, I guess one of the drill sergeants had carried him in. And then my drill sergeant, Drill Sergeant Alvarado, he was kind of the one that was in charge of like like the platoon leader he was our platoon leader and he's like oh private martinez he's like what happened and i was like i was hot he's like it's like negative 15 now it's like what do you mean you were hot and i was like i was standing in formation and, he's, and i was like i just felt really hot and they had to let me take off my vest and my uh t uniform top and you could see i just had pit stains my back was all really? stained in sweat i was just hot so he was like, oh, we're going to send you to um, the hospital with the other guy, the other kid who had fainted, who said the same thing. He just felt extremely hot. And we got there and they were like, um, you just went into shock. They're like, you were too cold and your body just rejected. It. rejected. He, they're like, that's why you were too hot. I was, I was there all day. I got there probably at seven in the morning and I left right before chow. Uh, for supper chow. So I was there all day. They had an IV in me, um, blankets in me. And I, j I was just there with an IV all day. But um, t 13 other soldiers ended up going to the hospital too that later that day I found out with frostbite on their toes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, the one of the medics that were there, they're like, oh, what company are you guys from? Because they're like, you guys have 15 total cold weather related injuries. He's like, you guys had two that pass, pass out and um, 13 with frostbite on their toes. And we're, we all said what company we were from and they connected the dots that we were from the same company and they actually sent out the brigade commander out there to talk to the soldiers about the night prior and the drill sergeants, and they actually got in trouble for having us I'm out guessing. there. Yeah. They got our, um, our, our own commander, our company commander, I guess, got in trouble for allowing us to stay out there without the heat and having 15 of us have injuries. Sure. Yeah. But um, yeah, that was just days before graduation. Crazy. And um, the rest, the ones that had the rest of the time, because it was like a five-day thing, every night we got to go back to the barracks, or they got to go back to the barracks and stay. They actually told me that I wasn't going to participate in the rest of the of that training because of the shock that I was through. So me and the other guy that passed out Keep just cool ended up that. staying um, at the barracks for the rest of the time. I spent my time just reading a book the entire time, and then... The rest of the company was still going out and running their training and coming back at the end of the day. And then uh, after that, it was the end of our AIT. They, um, we just spent the last two days getting our stuff together, packing, getting ready. They allowed us to have a family day the day before. My family came down. Um, my parents, my sister, my brother, they're my sister's husbands, and then my friend Austin Shapansky, who graduated with me, James Peterson, who was in Johnny's class, came, and um, this little boy I used to babysit, his name was Kaysen, they all went to my graduation, and I spent the day with them, got reunited, and then we did, I did supper with them, then they had to take me back to Fort Leonard Wood because um, they let us off base for family day. And when we got back, it was just they go to sleep. And then we went to graduation. We did our graduation ceremony. And that was the, um, oh, before that, they also had us, before they released us on family day, they had everybody um, in a formation 
with their family. So we could see our family, but we couldn't leave because we were on formation. So you could see, I remember my sister had came up and she was taking pictures, but we couldn't move or anything because we were still in formation. And then um, they released us from formation. We could, that's when I first went with my family, you know, reunited with them after the six months of training. Um, went off base for supper. They had to drop me back off, and then the next day was graduation. And then after the graduation ceremony, it was just, you can go home. So we did uh, the drive back. My It was my parents, my sister, Adela, and Tim went off on their own. And then my other sister, Annette, Ben, Johnny, Austin Shapansky, and James... In case, and we were all in the other car, and we just... You had quite a crew there. Yep. We had a road trip home. Yep, Austin Chapansky came to my graduation in James Peterson. And then a little boy that I trained, uh, babysat before I had left for training. Nice. So, I had a big crew to come home with. So, you came home, and you were going to school in Fargo? Yep, I came yeah. home. I came home... Um, <coughs> at the end of November, like a few days before December. I spent December at home and then I went straight into college at UND in January. So I just had the month of December and then started college. I was, I started January, I can't remember what day exactly, but I, the criminal justice program there, um, during orientation, because we had an orientation day too, um, I got to meet Dawson Kraft. We, he actually just randomly had sat next to me during orientation and we were talking. And he happened to be in the criminal justice program also. And um, we didn't know yet, but we were actually going to end up at the same company in Grand Forks also, in the same platoon and the same team. So, um, just a coincidence that we had met there. And so we were doing classes together, like every day of the week and doing, going to, uh, our, you know, our weekend a month. And we were in the same platoon, same team, uh, squad. So I was doing everything with him and we became like, he was like my best friend, like a big brother. And, um, he actually, um, we did the first two years. We basically had our classes set up. We had the same thing. Um, he's so still. How long have you been in now? Uh, three, four ish, maybe. Going on four years? Yeah. Jokum was ahead of me by a year. And I think he just redid his contract. So. Oh, he I extended say, though? He extended, yes. Um, and you're in for six years? Yep, mine's a six year. Can't remember exactly what. January 18 of 24, I think. I'm almost almost done. But, um, yep. Uh, and we, they're paying for your school? Yes. So I get the GI Bill. And so I get, uh, they... You pay into that at all? Did you have to pay into that? No. To get any part so of that? Um, it came <coughs> with my contract. It was a GI Bill. They helped with schooling and they helped with the tuition. And then um, the state uh, also, you know, took uh, a portion of the what I had to pay. So uh, as long as I kept my grades up, so. We so you had to have a certain grade. Yeah, it had to be like a C and above, okay. or C plus or so and above. You couldn't. You don't go. just get a free ride. Yeah, no. So you had to keep your grades up to to have them um, pay for your stuff. If you, for some reason, had like a C minus or a D, you actually had to pay for that um, class. Really? Yep, okay. they, you would pay for that. They'd pay for your stuff, but then you had to pay for the class that you had that lower <laughs> grade in. Um, we did, I came back. Um, I didn't go back to, they gave me the option in December if I wanted to uh, go to like to my company right away or just take that month off and I took it off. I didn't go to my company until January. Um, it was in Fark, 
well, it's Grand Forks, but that drill weekend was actually in Fargo because they had a crew coming back from overseas. So we had welcomed them back in okay. Fargo. That was my first drill. We had welcomed a crew that came back from overseas and um, was introduced kind of to the group. And I've been there since. They, we've been going back and forth from Fargo, <coughs> Grand Forks, um, just monthly our monthly weekend trainings and our two weeks. And you got married here. somewhere in here. I got married. I got married this last May. This last May. Yep. I and his married. name is? Diedrich. 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 Yep. So he got married. Um, I'm in here. I'm... How'd you guys meet? School. School? Yep. Okay. He's He was aviation at uh, UND also. He graduated May... For, we got married May 5th, and then he graduated May 14th. Oh, cool. So we did that. Um, we've moved back to Colorado. That's where, because he's doing some flying there. But I'm here with family because I'm leaving on a deployment for a few months. And it's around the SETCOM. That's what they call it, SETCOM area. We're going to be in and um, going to be roughly nine to a year. Um, you're just in back in Stevens, spending time with my family, my side of the family before I leave. So, um, just kind of hanging out and working and working. Yeah. Yep, he's working at the Kelly's Country Market. I don't know if you've seen him. Yes, yeah. he's, he's working just... there, and I'm helping out at the Tamarack before I go because I worked at the Tamarack for about two years during high school. So I knew it i was asked if i would go back to help out for a little bit so i did okay so i'm just a little, little story of mine for and he uh i could never remember her name in high school and <laughs> she was a friend of my nieces and rachel told me just call her arnie she'll she'll go with arnie that's <laughs> that yeah that kind of goes to your personality yeah <laughs> yep. anything else about your military career that you would like to talk about or um I guess you had asked about being tased and pepper sprayed I did do that when I got back that was also my my first two my first two uh, weeks like summer training that we did we went to Camp Grafton they that's when we got our certifications for getting pepper sprayed and tased I got pepper sprayed first um, they we had to do this whole course to pass to get our certification you had to get sprayed you had to um after you got sprayed you had to run to the first station you had to um take someone down arrest them the second station was um like kind of kind of like uh they kind of resisted more and you had to take them down put them on the ground and the third station was the same thing Except you had to identify the weapon that they had because they, they were holding a weapon. You had to identify the weapon, take them down, and give grid coordinates on a walkie to what your location was. Um, I did my... I got sprayed. Luckily, the person who sprayed me didn't spray me correctly. They're supposed to go across the eyes. He sprayed me up here on my forehead. So I went through the first three stations three stations just fine but once I re reached that last one that's when it had dripped into my eyes by that time so I I remember I had taken him down I had identified the weapon I had taken him down and I just went blank on like the grid they had told me what location to give and I just could not remember so I remember just sitting there for a second trying to stay calm because my eyes were you know, burning, had to, had to keep them open because I had to read what was in front of me. And um, finally, one of one of my, um, I think it was my team leader, uh, my sergeant just whispered it to me. So I said it and I finished it. I got in. They had taken us over to uh, like the washing area. They put baby soap in our hands and we had to wash our eyes. Um, that's when I got pepper sprayed. We learned that it reactivates with water, so when we got in the showers again, we had to be careful, you know, we had to stick our heads in first, because it was going to reactivate, so we had to go through it basically two times with the pepper spray. 
And then, um, yeah, that was, I remember, it just burns your eyes. And they're like, keep, you try to keep your eyes open, but they're just closed and they're just crying. And it cleared my sinuses also. Okay. Yep. So a lot of the stuff you've done has been fun. This probably wasn't one of them. No, that fun. was not, that was not a good experience. That following day we did the tasing certification. So they, you have a class, you, they show you how to use the taser properly and um at the end of it you get tased by the person and um by our like teacher that was, it was one of our sergeants that was teaching it and he he's a good he's a great guy I love him um he's in our <coughs> company but he just he was he wanted to have fun that day so he's like oh we should instead of you know usually it's one person getting tased at a time he's like well, we should uh, experiment a little. Let's try some new things. So he'd, you know, he'd tase one person or he'd be like, oh, let's do two people at a time. So they'd have us lock arms and they have, because it's two prongs, three prongs actually. And one prong would go like into one person and two in the other. Or they had like, when I went, it was three people. And it was um, me, Durley in the middle. And then Dave, her name was Davison, and we were all linked arms, and they had to sit on the ground since we were all linked up. They had to sit, and, um, you know, he did taser, 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 and, you know, shot the taser. So each of us got one prong in us, but we were all linked, so, you know, it kind of, like, goes through all of us. And I, I remember, like, um, some people, I have no idea, because some people would get tased, and they'd still be able to, like, say something like the person who went before me the one that went to uh training basic training and stuff with me her name is was Luger. um she, when she got tased she like she clenched up but she said ow 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 the entire time she was just saying ow but when i like when i got that um prong in me um we all fell back at the same time when we got tased we fell back we couldn't um, I, I like I remember thinking like unlink myself from the other person but I couldn't physically do it and sh the person in the middle was like her legs were just spazzing out and like kicking me I remember getting kicked in the back and I remember thinking like I telling myself to breathe because when it hit me all I did was like a <laughs> And they took a video, and you could you could hear me go like make well, that. Well, there's like, a video. Yeah, they took a video, and you could hear me just go huh, and like stop. Like I was telling us to like breathe, but like I just held my breath the entire time. You have the video? I could probably ask for it. He <laughs> he was taking videos of us because he showed us at the end, <coughs> and um, we fell back. And I remember I I couldn't even breathe. Like I just held my breath the entire time. So I have no idea how some people were able to like say it. something but um actually so since i fell back when it hit me the prong went in deeper i have a picture of it too the prong went in deep so i i had like a blood stain because i bled from when i fell on it uh -huh. and they had to pull it out and the person the other person that was at the end the same thing she like instantly went back so hers went in deeper too and they had to kind of pull it out and she also bled from it and I think I still have I kept the shirt I had washed it but like there's like a hole in it from where the prong you had to pull it out but it was an experience I'd honest I would uh definitely get tased over pepper sprayed again though they always <laughs> ask so oh, which one would you do again like if you had they had to do it again which one would you choose and I was like tase because the taser it's quick seven seconds you're done the pepper spray i was like it's there until you can get it washed and then it reactivates in water so you have to go through it two times but um dawson craft the one that went to college with me and stuff he had no reaction to the pepper spray they sprayed him they had their they said there's some people that don't it's react to it, to it. Yep, and um, sprayed him, and he had no reaction. He was just fine. He, I remember him walking up to me. He's like, "How's it going?" And he's smoking a cigarette. And I was like, "Were you? Did you get sprayed?" And he's like, "Yeah." And I was like, 
<laughs> he's What's like wrong you, with you, huh? he's like you he's he told me he's like you looked so mad when I came up to you just <laughs> fine while you were in tears you know trying to wash your eyes yeah. but yeah um <laughs> you know all these things definitely stuff you look back on and you're glad you did it it's you know it's kind of funny you know you look back on it but um definitely enjoyable um I've enjoyed my time. I'll be leaving here soon and do a new experience. So, experience so, something else. What's your aspiration? Do you do you plan on staying in, or do your six years? See where you're at then, or? Yep. So my, I'll get back and I'll have a few months left. I don't plan on doing another extending. Um, since we had moved to Colorado, I'd have to commute back to North Dakota so I think after that I'm gonna commute back for those few months that I have left but then I'm done and then officially be out in Colorado and start start your life over start my life yep all okay. over again yeah <laughs> but. Well, well Anaki I appreciate you doing this interview mm -hmm. and good luck in uh, the Middle East mm -hmm. uh, be safe yep. and uh, thank you for your continued service Thank you. Thank you, Adam.